play a few licks on the trombone, and let's do this week's Initial Cuts. It's Thursday again, Trekkies, and we've got the sixth episode of Picard Season 2. Two of one. I'll be talking about a NASA gala worth of spoilers if you'd like to lift off now. This is so far the weakest, slowest episode of the season, but it's got some really good setup and new clues to this season's Dixon Hill-style mystery. This might be the shortest episode in Trek history at only 38 minutes, including recap and credits. As long as it doesn't take till the last episode to start paying off these story threads like Discovery did this season, it's a decent mid-season setup episode. Right off the bat, I think this is a good episode title. I love this boring designation reference to the Queen and Gerardi. This is the second episode in a row to feature Jonathan Frakes in the director's chair. I think his directorial style punched up this otherwise mediocre mid-season script. I'm going to give a like now for the several camera shots of the band playing at this party focusing in or behind the trombonist. One of the only even kind of callbacks to other Trek in this episode. We're dropped into Picard not looking too good on the pavement. Which brings me to the first dislike. I know Picard's synthetic body isn't as robotic as Data's, but he gets a full head wound and a doctor from the 21st century can keep him alive by the end? Dr. Ramirez even zaps him a couple of times. This has a small effect on Picard's body, but it shorts out her defibrillator. Like Rio said earlier in the season, no one can explain it to me. But I'm not going to let season one's biggest mistake plague too much of the enjoyment of this overall solid second season. So let's give an obligatory like for Rios and Dr. Ramirez. That on-screen chemistry is just gold. Apparently, though, by becoming part Borg Queen, Agnes now has the superhuman android powers Picard lacks, when she literally rips out of two pairs of handcuffs. I find it interesting that at a party with free top-shelf booze, Raffi only orders a club soda, even with all the baggage she's still carrying around over the death of Elnor. Seems like Renee is drinking enough for everyone, though. I've got a like for Rios' amazement at 21st century niceties, like real cigars. A good chunk of this episode is about relationships between various characters. Picard and Talon trade observations about each other, though we're no closer to understanding why she looks like Laris. Rios and Gerardi have a brief interaction as if they're an old married couple, and she and the Borg Queen poke at each other's insecurities. We see Q's plan playing out through Adam Soong ambushing Picard at the gala. Jean-Luc really seems taken back by this striking resemblance to Data. Only this one won't save your life. He'll run you down with his 23 Chrysler at a high-profile event that should have lots of cameras everywhere. He gets the people in charge of the party to get security to move in on Picard. Just when you think the jig is up. Two of one somehow creates an EMP knocking out electric and lights for a minute. This is where I have a dislike. No, not for the musical number that literally comes out of nowhere for no good reason. It's Pretty good. No, this dislike is for the writers a second week in a row not getting the science of an EMP right. Something that would knock out everything like that would fry every ballast, LED controller, and tungsten filament in the area. So I'm not sure where the spotlight comes from. Either way, it's the distraction Picard needs to slip out and find his ancestor that's not doing well emotionally. I've got a like for this psychological pep talk that seems to have, for now, put her back on the path to keeping his timeline preserved. We yet again hear the words, look up, from a Picard. She reminds me a lot of Reg Barkley, someone who's brilliant but has trouble getting out of their own way mentally. This is where Soong hits him with his car and we're brought back full circle to the beginning with Picard bleeding on the ground. Actually, we come back several times through the episode, and each time we get a bit more of the flashbacks to Picard's mom. These ones are particularly hard to catch at only a few frames of video each. We appear to see more abuse by his father or someone, and Picard and his mom potentially trying to leave. We see that it's he who smashes the atrium with a rock, and not just any rock. What we also see in these flashbacks is potential clues to something hidden in the chateau. He takes the rock out of a rock wall where it looks like something could be hidden. We see Picard with an antique key to a door. 
There's also this quick flash of just a creaking floorboard, as if there might be something hidden underneath. At the very least, it's imagery that would suggest something hidden or locked away. There's also some nightmare fuel of the Joker in a Riemann zombie or something. Can't wait to see how these images all come together in Picard's backstory. The last major piece to talk about is Corey finally doing some digging into her father. After he goes off on a Q-style rant, what she finds is how her father was previously disgraced for genetic experimentation on homeless veterans. Further digging into his personal files, she finds pictures that appear to be her as a little girl, but she doesn't remember. It's unclear if Soong had an original daughter that died but cloned many more times over, and Cory is the final one to just barely survive. He had a naming convention of Greek goddesses surrounding Persephone, queen of the underworld. Cory itself is one of the several names for Persephone. He mentions Despania, sister of Persephone and goddess of mysteries, which is probably a nod to the mystery theme of this season. There's Artemis, half-sister of Persephone and goddess of wild animals, vegetation, and childbirth. Also mentioned is Thalia, goddess of comedy. There's probably more, but I'd have to have Data's ability to analyze six pieces of music at once to tease out more names from this chorus of Brent Spiner. Corey went way further down this dark rabbit hole than I think she bargained for. One of the articles she finds is by Noah Schloss, who is an animator this season on Picard. We're set up at the end for not Laris to go inside Picard's mind in a poor man's mind meld. I thought it was a nice nod to the fact that Gary Seven was aware of Vulcans and she must also have some knowledge. Finally, we're left on Raffi wondering what else could possibly go wrong, as Borg Queen Agnes goes for a casual stroll through Los Angeles. We're again left with a pile of additional questions that add to the show building mystery this season. Some of this needs to start paying off next week. I'm assuming Talon going into Picard's head is going to give us some amount of conclusion to what's going on with Picard and his mom. Here's to hoping we answer more questions than we ask next week. Until then, I've been your host, Dustin Wing.